reduce heart rate and thinking cap on. Let's get the roots nicely misted so that they can absorb some water and hopefully I can remove them easily from the mount before we remove the wire. I said reduce heart rate. Breathe in, breathe out, and in and out. Slow down the hands, stay methodical. It broke. Oh, the wire was so corroded. It broke. That's a blessing. Stay methodical, stay methodical. She is your wish list orchid of many, many years after all. Yes, this is how I do self-talk when I'm not actually talking. <laughs> These are the conversations I have and how I have them in my head. <laughs> it's good to have you on the patio. Ooh, are you still with me? A little bit of an unconventional start to this video of potting up my Lelia rubescence. So she has started active root growth, something I've been looking out for all this time since she arrived in the collection in December of 2023. And she's starting a new growth. Now there's another little eye down there. We can be observing that if it's going to do anything. But first of all, let's get her off the mount. And then I can breathe. I wasn't really anticipating this to be a huge challenge, but seeing as this orchid is new in my collection, I have no idea if her root growth is vigorous, if she's tentative. So for the time being, I would like to reduce collateral damage to an absolute, absolute minimum. Was that it? That was it. Yippee! I yay. Okay, now <laughs> that's all I'm going to do, with the exception of potting her up. And I'm so happy that you're here, and I hope that you are already enjoying this video. I'm going to show you what I do because this orchid is going to be living outside in my climate here in southern Spain. Her lowest temperature tolerance is 10 degrees Celsius, which I get during the winter. That is also her rest period. During the summers, when she's in active growth like now, she can handle a lot, a lot of water. We have a little pseudobulb that is done here, so we can take that off. But she can handle a lot of water, but during the winter, she would prefer to be dry. However, I'm still putting her into a semi-hydroponic setup with lava rock only, and I will explain my layering. This is unfortunate that these are going aerial. <clears throat> aerial as in my case, once she's potted up on a mount, there wouldn't be an issue. But this orchid also has a tendency of rotting her new growths very easily. So yeah, let me get my pot and let's talk through the layering of the lava rock I have intended for this orchid. What better welcome into a pot than a jacuzzi here in southern Spain, late spring, early summer. It's a beautiful day. Personally, if somebody were to say, here's a jacuzzi, this is your new home, I would say, I'm going to grow well in this environment. Right. What I've done here is already put medium-sized lava rock at the base. The semi-hydro holes are in the back here. You may not see them, but I've marked the area with the semi-hydro holes with a support in case I need it. We'll have to wait and see because the next thing I want to do, seeing as she likes to be a little bit drier during the winters, is to use a little bit smaller lava rock around her. Usually I do it the other way around, 
but I want to try and ensure that this orchid get exactly what she needs during the winter without rotting the roots because the semi-hydro setup and not the self-watering setup in this instance is because this orchid can live outside, meaning that if it rains, she can get rained on without me having to remove her out of a mask. I usually like to have orchids in self-watering pots only if they have to move inside because it makes my life easier. And that is why I've gone with medium lava rock because that will dry out a little faster even though it's in the reservoir which I can always drain during the winters but because she likes a lot of water and active growth I am now going to layer with small lava rock and if need be I will take really chunky lava rock to stabilize her in her pot or the support either of the two options while I get my orchid get her situated would you please give this video a like and I would so appreciate it if you were to subscribe to the channel should this be the first video you've seen maybe you've seen some before but haven't been convinced I would so appreciate your vote of confidence if you were to subscribe thank you so much and consider yourself welcome to the patio now if I didn't already have a support here marking where my semi hydro holes are I also would put my tag always where the holes are so that I know when if I have to drain her where to tilt her without dripping everything on the shelves because even though she'll be outside if I'm gonna drip something onto another orchid who knows what damage I will do now I also am always a fan of putting an orchid in the middle because you never know which direction of growth she's going to take but she is so young I'm going to try and get her to the back if I need that support at least it's close by so my pot is square then I like to take advantage of the diagonal you see I don't have a right flush up against the edge because you never know what an orchid is going to do in its growth cycle the new growth is here the other new growth would be right up against the bulb right here so this would be a good place for her for many many years that is the plan is to have her in the collection for many many years now I'm going to very slowly add my small lava rock around the roots just to make sure I don't bash those root tips I'm already encouraged to see that this orchid has a branching root system that always helps when it comes to the vigor, the future generosity of a root system, depending on the culture, of course, and how well I get this orchid established. So I just want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. New growth. Unfortunately, well, maybe we can get those root tips to direct themselves down into the pot. I doubt it, but we have some that will be covered by media. So I'm working my way back to front with the lava rock. This way I'm not throwing lava rock on new root tips. Another little fun fact about this orchid, when she does bloom, which I doubt she will for us this year, but when she does bloom, her bloom spikes <laughs> are extremely ambitious. <laughs> they get at least 90 centimeters long. And I am not really a fan of orchids with very long bloom spikes because I'm a klutz. And it is very upsetting when you have to cultivate an orchid with a long bloom spike during a time of year where your orchids may, or mine, may be inside, and then you snap a spike. So. The only exception is, again, this orchid lives outside and should she eventually grow a spike for us, <laughs> we'll be okay. That would be around late summer into autumn is her bloom period. <laughs> At least then the risk of breaking a spike is reduced by a lot. <laughs> Very carefully working my way towards that root tip and then just gently nudging lava rock into its space. Come sa. And that should actually be it for my orchid. You see how the water just helps to reduce the pressure that lava rock and the weight of the lava rock can apply, not just for root tips, but for the velamen in general. It is a super, super gentle method of potting up an orchid. I'm not going to tie her off. I'm going to find myself some really nice large lava rock and place it around her because when she goes on the shelf from now on, all I will do is flush her to keep her hydrated. 
The aim for this orchid, what I'm trying to achieve with her in the coming months with her new growth is establish the root system. Don't worry about the size of the growth. I'm not here to try and get her to bloom on this new growth. So there's going to be a lot of flushing. And for that reason, she can be on the shelf. I don't have to move her and I just pour fresh water over her. This is as stable as I'm going to get her. And for now, I am quite happy with that. So I'm going to drain her very, very carefully. Yeah, I like the look of this a lot. She doesn't fall under the category of the Rapiculus Lelius, but that is exactly how I'm going to be cultivating this orchid as if she were a Rapiculus Lelia. She would also prefer to have, let's say in the winter, a lot of sun, direct sun, doesn't matter because the temperatures are much cooler, but in the summer, during the hot time of year, do not expose this orchid to any direct sun. Her leaves will burn, not could burn, they will. I'll just increase some humidity around her. Perfect. Lelia Rovessens has moved into her hopefully permanent accommodation and now I'm going to put her into her permanent location. So this is where I can keep an eye on her. She's next to Lelia Millery, which is a Rapiculus Lelia, and then flanked by Lelia Kautskiana, which is my OG Kautskiana. Growing a new growth, I'm happy to say. Unfortunately, I have lost some Rapiculus Lelias, and this one was in dire straits for many, many years, but she is coming back. It is awesome to watch. So Lelia Robescence, the rose-tinted Lelia has found her place super easy accessible easy to get a picture in there and just keep flushing and one thing i do have to keep an eye on and keep an eye out for is the wind even though she's low and she's got a little wall in the back it is super breezy sometimes in the blooming alley so i'm just going to keep an eye out for her stability needs must we're going to build another little fortifying wall of large lava rock <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I am so happy it went faster than I had thought. The outcome was epic for me. I appreciate your time so much. And thank you for watching to the end. It gives me the opportunity to wish you a fabulous day, but I attach a condition to that, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.